Sabrina. It's great to be here. There's a saying among photographers that what's important to taking a great picture is, in order, subject, lighting, lens, and the camera body. It's their way of saying that it doesn't matter which SLR body you use unless you get the first three elements right. Well, here's a slightly different take on this list. Subject, lighting, lens, software. So by software, I mean computational photography. So what does that mean? It means doing less with hardwired circuitry and more with code. I like to call it a software-defined camera. It typically means capturing and combining multiple pictures to make a single better picture. One version of this is HDR+, the technology we've used for taking photos on every Pixel phone. When you tap the shutter button, we capture a burst of up to nine pictures. These pictures are deliberately underexposed to avoid blowing out highlights. We align them using software and average them, which reduces noise in the shadows. This lets us brighten the shadows giving you detail in both the highlights and the shadows. In fact, there's a simple formula. Noise goes down as the square root of the number of images you average together. So if you use nine images, you get one third as much noise. This isn't mad science, it's just simple physics. By the way, on the left is our raw output if you enable that in the app. There's something else about this list. It says the lens is important. Without quibbling about the order on the list, some subjects are farther away than you'd like. So it does help telephoto shots to have a telephoto lens. So Pixel 4 has a roughly 2x telephoto lens plus our super res zoom technology. In other words, a hybrid of optical and digital zoom which we use on both the main and telephoto lenses so you get sharp imagery throughout the zoom range. Here's an example. You probably think this is a 1x photo. It's not. It's a zoom taken from way back here. By the way, Super res zoom is real multi-frame super resolution, meaning that pinch zooming before you take the shot gives you a sharper photo than cropping afterwards. So don't crop like this. Compose the shot you want by pinch zooming. Also, by the way, most popular SLR lenses do magnify scenes, not shrink them. So while wide angle can be fun, we think telephoto is more important. So what new computational photography features are we launching with Pixel 4? Four of them. First, Live HDR Plus. Everyone here is familiar with HDR Plus's signature look and its ability to capture extreme brights and darks in a way that looks crisp and natural. But even phones with good HDR solutions can't compute them in real time, so the viewfinder often looks different from the final image. In this example, the, viewfind the uh, window is blown out on the viewfinder, which might tempt you into fiddling with the exposure. This year, we're using machine learning to approximate HDR plus in the viewfinder. So you get our signature look while you compose your shot. We call this feature Live HDR plus. So the industry's most successful HDR solution is now real-time and WYSIWYG. What you see is what you get. Now, if we have an intrinsically HDR camera, we should have HDR controls for it. So Pixel 4 has dual exposure controls. Here's an example. This is a nice HDR Plus shot, but maybe you would like to try it as a silhouette. So you tap on the screen and lower the brightness slider a bit. That mainly changes the capture exposure. Then you lower the shadows slider a lot. That mainly changes the tone mapping. And voila, you get a different artistic vision. 
Try doing that with any other cell phone. So separate sliders for brightness and shadows while you compose your shot. It's a different way of thinking about controlling exposure in a camera. Second, white balancing in photography is a hard problem. Mathematicians call it an ill-posed problem. Is this snow blue the way this SLR originally captured it? Or is it white snow illuminated by a blue sky? We know that snow is white. With enough training, so can the camera. We've been using learning-based white balancing in night sight since Pixel 3. In Pixel 4, we're using it in all photo modes. So you get truer colors, especially in tricky lighting. Here's a tough case, an ice cave. It's blue light, but not a blue person. And here's what it looks like with Pixel 4's white balancing. Third, we've continued to improve portrait portrait mode. With our dual pixel macro shots, this year we're computing depth, again using machine learning, from both dual pixels and dual cameras, which gives us accurate depth farther from the camera. This extends portrait mode to large objects and stand further back portraits. We also have a luscious new SLR-like bokeh. That's the shape of the blur. Look at the lights on either side of her head. We're doing better on hair and dog fur, which are hard. And of course, we still do great selfie portraits. Fourth and last, we have continued to improve night sight in many ways and extended it to a use case that has always been sort of a holy grail for me. You could have taken this dusk shot using Pixel 3 last year. Using Pixel 4, you can take this nighttime picture from the same viewpoint. In the year since we launched it, Night Sight has been called everything from fake to sorcery. Well, it's neither. Think back to the mathematics that I explained at the beginning. Astrophotography is about taking longer exposures and more of them, up to 16 seconds times 15 exposures. That's four minutes. But it's a single shutter press, and it's fully automatic. By the way, you can't do this with a single long exposure. In four minutes, the stars do move, and trees wave in the wind. So you need robust alignment and merging of multiple pictures. And for four-minute exposure, we do recommend a tripod. Or you can prop your phone on a rock. Is there machine learning? Yes. We use it for white balancing, as I mentioned. We also use semantic segmentation in all our photo modes and have for years to brighten faces in HDR+, a feature we call synthetic fill flash, to separate foregrounds from backgrounds in portrait shots, and to darken and denoise skies in night sight. Is there computational photography? There's lots of that, too. Digital sensors are prone to hot pixels that are stuck at red, green, or blue. The longer the exposure, the more hot pixels. Our exposures are pretty long. So we need some clever algorithms to remove those hot pixels. By the way, that's our astrophotography field testing team. And yes, they sat still for a long time for this shot. So where does this game stop? What can't we capture using Pixel 4? Well, we can capture the moon, which, by the way, required some fiddling with those dual exposure controls I told you about. And we can capture a moonlit landscape. This is not daytime. It's the middle of the night. And the landscape is illuminated only by the moon. See the stars? But what we can't do, including on Pixel 4 today, is capture both at once in the same picture. The problem here is that the moon is blown out, and the Marin headlands at the bottom are just a silhouette. The dynamic range the difference in brightness between a full moon and a moonlit landscape is 19 f-stops 
That's 19 doublings, about half a million times brighter, way beyond the range of any consumer camera, even an SLR. So is this scene forever impossible with a cell phone? Remember what I said at the beginning about software-defined camera? Pixel is committed to making its cameras better with software updates. So stay tuned on this one. To sum up, four new computational photography features. Live HDR plus with dual exposure controls, learning-based white balancing, wider range portrait mode with an SLR bokeh, and night sight with astrography. Oh, and remember, you can use night sight for many things besides stars. Many things. So go out there and be creative with Pixel 4. Now, it's my honor to introduce one of my favorite artists who has spent her career creating some of the most memorable photographs of the life.